Hey, welcome back everybody. In today's video, we're going to be going over exactly how our cosmos was created according to my recent research. In this video, we're also going to be diving deep into what exactly this place really is. Now, to those of you who aren't familiar with the ripple effect at all, then after you watch this video, get in the video description area and check out those links that I have for you there because this video is going to be going deeper into those concepts that I've been going over in previous streams. And I don't want to be so redundant. So if you find yourself kind of lost on this one, don't worry. It's still going to be an interesting video. Just check out those links. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be dealing with the creation story according to my beliefs, as I mentioned, as well as symbolism that I've synced together with this belief, as well as a couple of Nikola Tesla's viewpoints on vibration. We're going to be dealing with the etymology of all of this and diving real deep into how sound vibration plays a very important role not only in the creation of our cosmos, but the sustaining of it. We're going to be dealing with sacred geometry, and we're going to be syncing all of this together with a lot of ancient viewpoints, including religious viewpoints. So many of you, like myself, have been around for quite some time, and we've seen a lot of excellent content surrounding Mount Maru, the Tree of Life, the North Pole, and the magnetic, or should I say electromagnetic energy at the center of our Earth. Many of us have concepts on exactly what we think the North Pole is. But in this video, I will be shedding my viewpoints on how I think the Earth was created from the center, then expanding outwards. And I'll also be syncing this concept with Western world concepts that I grew up learning in school. Let me make one thing clear. I do believe in a higher power, an intelligent creator that's responsible for this beautiful and intricate reality that we live in. And I believe that our cosmos was created from the center and expanded outward. And I know this sound familiar, but when I ask the question, how was the cosmos created is not to be taken lightly because if everything started from darkness, which I believe if there was a beginning that everything did start from darkness, then where did the creator get the materials from to create everything around you that you perceive as physical or solid? There was no water for the creator to pick up to make oceans. There was no wood for the creator to pick up to make trees. So according to a lot of religions, everything we see was simply thought into existence or spoken into existence via sound vibration. Now, when you think about it, thought is a sound and the word sound became sign or sin. Everything travels in sine waves, and in a minute, you're going to understand how vibration creates our reality. So like I said, a thought is a sound. It is a vibration. It is a noise. It has the power to change our physical makeup as our cells and quote-unquote atoms start to resonate with sound. When the atoms resonate, the new noise echoes and attract similar vibrations. This is important because later we're going to read in the book of Genesis about the first day. And we're not talking about the sun. We're talking about the first idea within that darkness, that infinite sea of potential that created the vibration that we call life today. So they tell us that we live in ecosystems and the word eco is echo. So just like we just read every thought. When the atoms resonate, the new noise echoes and attracts similar vibrations. If you want to get more into detail on how thoughts are sounds, you could check out the description. All that exists is thought and vibration. 
Now, one thing I come to find out in researching is that this darkness isn't equivalent to emptiness. There's a difference between space and emptiness and room. And we'll be getting into that as we get deeper into the video. So one of the questions we got to ask ourselves is how did the creator create something out of nothing? And I think that when we ask the question, the question itself is what needs to be examined because we equating the darkness to nothing. My research has led me to the belief that darkness itself is the primordial element of all of the four elements. So later when we start syncing this to the information that I have for you, we can gain more clarity. But we got to understand that this darkness we're speaking of is the purest thing in the cosmos. It's the most neutral thing in the cosmos. You can't hold it in your hand, but all things that you're able to touch, hear, smell, see comes from it. So when we talk about the darkness, think of it this way. Every color in your cosmos combined is darkness. So all colors come from this darkness. We know that darkness is very potent. It's a great womb. We're talking the stuff behind the stars. It's the same stuff behind your eyelids that you must go into to reset every day. So it's a place to rest one's consciousness. It's a subconscious realm. So when we think of darkness... We think of darkness as the creator of all the colors in the rainbow. We think of darkness equivalent to zero. Zero is the first number because it's not a number. It's what gives birth to all of the numbers. All of the numbers are divisible by zero. Infinity ends in zero. So it's the alpha and omega zero is the 360 and it's darkness. So darkness is all of the colors. Darkness is zero. Darkness is equivalent to stillness, which gives us the foundation for movement. We got to start looking at this darkness as the foundation of our cosmos. And I'm going to show you why that's so as we move on. We see that darkness is the foundation of all colors, the mother of all colors. We see that darkness is the mother of all numbers is zero. We see that darkness is the mother of movement itself because darkness is equivalent to stillness. The most high is the darkness behind the stars, which is still as still can be. But the stars themselves is movement as well as you and me, everything below. But the foundation that allows for us to have this movement is this stage of darkness that's still. So think of a basketball court. If the court was moving, the players couldn't play. The court must be perfectly flat and still for the players to play up on it. So this darkness is a wave of infinite Zen or energy and infinite potential. It's also a portal in between worlds. And for us to get deeper into the ripple effect, we must start here. We see what foundates movement is founded upon the most subtle wave of stillness. And when we talk darkness, we're also talking about silence. So all sounds were born from silence, which allows for a foundation to create any song upon. So you need a blank canvas as the basis for any creation. And this is what we call darkness. And this is what all creation stories start with. So this darkness was looked at as a type of water, but not the water you drink. We're going to learn more about this darkness as we move on and we'll sink this to the biblical Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. This is a very important scripture to pay attention to because what we're reading now is that basically the only thing that existed was darkness. But in verse two, we see that the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. What waters are the Bible talking about? Because no element exists at this point. So what my research has led me to conclude upon based on a lot of the ancient creation stories, what I'll be sharing more parallels here in a minute. 
when the Bible refer to waters in this scripture, it's simply referring to that darkness as infinite potential. Now, the root word of water is wa. And there are many ancient deities, such as the mother goddess Nuwa, which is one of the oldest deities in Southeast Asia. She represents the primordial waters. And these are the same waters that the Bible are referring to in this scripture. This is not water like the water we drink when we're thirsty. This is more like the water we drink when we're sleepy and the body needs to reset. Now, again, Set is another deity that we see in Kemet that's linked to this underworld or this darkness, this renewal realm. So when we say reset, the sun and moon have to reset every once in a while. We call it an eclipse. When we say reset, the word reset became the word rest. If you take the E off of the end. So reset is reset or rest. All dealing with this primordial seat that our cosmos was created from, just like you create a world inside of a dream. And it's all because darkness acts as the foundation and the thought is the vibration that disturbs that sea and creates the vibration or the life or the ecosystem, which is really ecosystem. Now, the word disturb does not mean what we have been taught. The word disturb actually means to calm the sea. Remember that water that's not moving is stagnant. It allows for certain type of parasitical life forms that otherwise wouldn't be able to exist in a stream or a place where the water is constantly moving. So in the case of our earth pond cosmos, when we talk about raising our vibration, that alone will help kill a lot of the parasites that rule over us at this moment in this place. Running water such as a river is life giving. It's a stream. So when the water is moving or it's disturbed, it becomes life giving. The word turb means chaos, disorder, as in turbulence. So when you disturb something, you take away the disorder or the chaos. Today, we talk that disturb mean the opposite. But actually, when you bother someone, you are turbing them. So to disturb is to make calm. And this is just an introduction. We haven't even scratched the surface yet. So again, one of the oldest deities in Asia to represent these waters that we speak of in Genesis, these dark waters of fertility, these waters that allows for creation. Her name was Nuwa. And you can look at that as new water. Later, we're going to sink this into the Christian baptism. But what I want to point out as it relates to the book of Genesis is that when we look at Nuwa, we're looking at what's called a Nagini. And Naginis are deities that we can find throughout Asia and some other places as well. A Nagini later became a creature that we know in the Western world as a genie. So Nagini is Nagini. And genie is the root word of genesis, dealing with genetics human origins or how this cosmos came to be. And the reason that this Nagini was a symbol of that in the ancient world is because of the shape of the Nagini, which shaped like a sine wave and also equivalent to those waters of Nu. I also find it interesting that when we talk about the genie, that the genie comes from darkness and grant your wishes after you rub the lamp. And rubbing is a form of vibration. So we see these parallels. So when the book of Genesis talk about this darkness as waters, it's the same ancient concept of the Nagini. It was referred to as the primordial waters of Nu by the Kemetic people. Also, the mother goddess Ama from the Dogon tribe. Oshun by the Yorubans. And Oshun is simply ocean. Nuwa became the root word of Nuwapu and Nuwabian. And you can see many, many parallels around the world of this deity that represent the primordial waters. So the root word wa is the root word of water. It's the root word of watts. And we know that watts is dealing with power. We know that water moves in waves and the root word of wave is wa. And that all things are essentially vibrating waves. We also know that the root word of wash 
is Wa because we're dealing with water, the root word of Wa is also the name of a type of guitar that makes the Wa Wa sound because of the vibration. When we talk about water, we talk about current, which is also equivalent to power. The word current is also equivalent to the now. Every moment is a new wave of energy. The now is equivalent to the present, which is the serpent, another symbol of the sine wave. So this darkness is the sea of potential. Now the words P-O-T, we also find in, in other words that are related to water. When we talk about the sea of potential, we know that potential simply means something that's potent. We know that in the water or the seas of the earth, it's the most life than anywhere on earth. In fact, one drip of water has billions of microorganisms living within it. Water is very potent with life and it's life giving, it's life sustaining. But when we talk about this darkness, we're not talking about the water we drink. So more similarities that we see in the POT root is potable, which means drinkable. Potable water is drinkable water. Also, when we say frequency, we're saying free quenching because everything is quenched with energy. And everything is creating energy. So frequency is free quenching. Tesla said that it's free energy all around us. And all we have to do is tap into the frequency or the free quenching. And we do that by tapping into the river of life, the tree of life, the cup that runneth over with the frequency or the free quenching. Just some similarities to show you how all of these words relate. Just so we can get a better understanding of the nature of this darkness. This darkness is related to water because it's a very neutral wave. It can be looked at as the heartbeat of the creator, the pulse of the creator, the breath of the creator. Our reality is composed of polarities and the sum of these polarities or the trinity of these polarities is the very reality that we enjoy. So when we talk about this wave, we're talking about an, a yin-yang motion, an inhale, exhale motion. And it's the purest wave in the cosmos. Everything around you was created from darkness. The chair you sitting on, the computer you're looking at. If no one had pondered these things in the darkness of their mind, you wouldn't even be able to touch them right now. I find it interesting that the root word of ponder is pond dealing with water. So the things that are pondered in darkness come to light and what we see in the light is just a Johnny come lately or a copy. The original copy of that thing remains in the dark mind or the womb of the creator. And you can destroy all of the copies on earth of that thing, but it'll still come in and out of existence because the idea the seed that exists in darkness is infinite. The root word of seed is sea, as in water, as in your eyes, which are made of water, what you use to see. What we perceive as physical or solid may come in and out of existence. Things come and go. They're created. They're used for a while. Then over time, they decompose and more of them are created. What we perceive as solid comes in and out of existence, but the idea is what always remains. So that which is physical or solid is infinite, but when we say it comes in and out of existence, there's an inhale-exhale process even to life itself, microcosm, macrocosm. So we sleep every night, and in a macrocosm form, we die and be reborn over and over again. This is infinity. So life and death can be looked at as a cosmic breath or a cosmic sleep. And this is all important to know as we talk about this darkness. So the root word of physical is phi, dealing with the yoni or the womb of creation. Phi is pi, also dealing with the number five. And we're going to be dealing with this etymology deeper as we get deeper in the video, because this is also the root word of vibration or vibe, V-I. Now, when we say solid, the root word is soul. We're saying soul lid. What you're calling solid is just a lid or a cap for your soul. It's an avatar. It's your soul's vibration. 
and it comes in and out of existence. So you are a vibration and every now and then that vibration takes a cosmic breath before it plays again. You can compare this to a resetting or an eclipse. Right now you're a pulse star or a pulse star. And remember that the root word of pulse star or pulsar is pulse dealing with the heartbeat or vibration. And it's also the root word of pulp dealing with the fleshy part of the fruit, not the skin and not the core, but the Trinitarian part of the fruit, the part of the fruit while you pick it from the tree, not the parts what allow you to be able to pick it, meaning the seed, which is responsible for how it grew there, and the skin, which is responsible for protecting it, but the pulp, which is the meat. And you also see the three words P-U-L because it's also the root word of pull, Everything pulls its energy from the center. So when we talk about the word pulp and pulse, we see how they relate. And we see the word pulpit has the root word pull or pulp. And we see that the pulpit is at the center focal point of the congregation of the church where everyone pulls their information from the source, which is the pastor, the one who's feeding them the frequency or the free quenching. So bear with me, we're working our way up to the etymology and the sacred geometry and the symbolism. So from this darkness come all things. From the darkness of a womb comes new human beings. You go to sleep at night and you go to darkness. And in that darkness, you create the sun, you create the moon, you create clouds, wind, weather, insects. You create ecosystems, other people in your sleep. All behind the darkness of your eyelids, the sea of potential. And when you're dreaming, you even recreate yourself. When you're running in your dreams, you're getting tired. But how are you getting tired if you're resting in the bed? That's because you've recreated a whole nother body in the dream. You created another pair of lungs. The mind has even recreated itself in the dream. So this is the power of the mind and the mind is equivalent to that darkness. The brain would be the physical manifestation of the mind and the pineal gland is what steers both sides of the brain left and right. It's the third person in darkness that's controlling your avatar. This is just an intro to the darkness. We're going to get very deep into the rabbit hole as we move on. So this darkness, this sea of potential that the Bible speak of and so many ancients speak of is not a liquid water. In fact, there would be no liquid water if there wasn't for this darkness. Earlier, I asked you, how was the cosmos created if there were no materials? Well, there was a material and that's called darkness. So in this video, I challenge everyone to begin to look at darkness different now. Darkness is the fifth element, or should I say the first element, words that begin in F-I-V-I -I and S-I, and there's a couple of more like C-Y. We're going to get into all of these because they're dealing with the number five. So when we talk about silence and we talk about this fifth dimension that so many celebrities talked about, I'm going to be breaking that down to you. The first and the fifth are synonymous, dealing with the fire root. When we get past this Genesis narrative, I'm going to get into the numbers and the etymology and show you what I mean. Darkness gave birth to water, wind, earth, and fire. And you do this in your dreams all the time. When you recreate this exact same world, you even recreate yourself. So how was the cosmos created if there were no elements? Because there was L. The elements were birthed from L, which is the mind. The subconscious mind that's invisible, that gave birth to this conscious experience that's very visible. The elements were birthed from ale. Another way of saying drips from the ocean or drips from the cosmic sea. They represent the four cornerstones of reality or what the Bible called the four corners. But they all were birthed from ale. So ale in a plural form is Elohim or Elohim. Because all of the elements are the first echo of the primordial source. And after the building blocks of the cosmos or the cornerstones of the cosmos that we call the elements, we were formed out of those Elohim or elements. So let us make man in our image 
is the darkness speaking through the four elements to create man. These four elements or these four cornerstones are the ingredients that make up our cosmos. They also make up all of the elements that we are composed of, as well as all of the things that we use to create with. Everything you perceive as physical around you is just a vibration or a thought. Remember, thought is sound. So what you perceive as physical is made purely of sound vibration. Remember that sound can act as a barrier. That's why they say sound barrier. So sound can be touched and it can feel solid and physical. I just broke down to you the word solid and physical and how this reality we live in is a spiritual realm. Nothing is really solid or physical. All is vibration. We even say things like make sure you have sound thoughts, meaning to have the capacity to think, reason, and understand for oneself. Adults by nature are considered in general to be in sound mind, but through certain circumstances can be rendered as being not in sound mind due to intensive brain damage or other major incapacities. So when we talk about the four elements, we're talking about the first building blocks of the most high. That's why we can't create nothing unless we use those as our foundation. So when we talk about these elements, this would be the subconscious creator wielding itself into visible consciousness. So the head being the darkness and the four limbs of the most high being the four elements, two arms and two legs. And from this body or these five points comes the pentagram of existence or the pinnacle of life all emanating from a point of singularity or a black hole that we call the darkness, not necessarily one dot floating in space, but this black hole is simply a concept, a void, where we go again to rest or reset where all things come in and out of existence from. So we pull physicality from this primordial sea of darkness and everything around us come in and out of existence from this darkness. So how was the cosmos created? First, the creator split itself or made an echo of itself. And that became the four cornerstones of four elements that were birthed from ale. These were the drips from the cosmic sea, the first form of individuality, because the word ripple is also the word rebel. And we'll be getting into this etymology deeper later, as I said. But everything in the conscious realm have to come in and out of existence and reset itself in the subconscious realm. So the Egyptian deity known as Set is also equivalent to Satan or Satan or Saturn. And we'll be getting deep into this, showing you why this is important in a minute. Set is a dark deity that's related to the underworld. And this underworld, again, is equivalent to this darkness in Genesis that we're talking about. And this darkness that we see in Genesis is in Genesis because all things began or the genesis of all things is from this darkness that is behind your eyelids. It is equivalent to another deity called the reaper. And another word for reaper is repair. That's what the body does when you go into the darkness at night when you sleep. Remember that the word repair means to just rejoin a pair throughout the day. The left and right brain works as polarities. So the darkness is that neutral point and you can't escape rest or sleep. The reaper will come for you every night for rest and in and out of existence as we pass away and reincarnate. Remember that this dark deity that we call a reaper is just another form of L or Saturn. And I'll be syncing this all together again, like I said in a minute here. And this all ties into vibration because the darkness, according to Genesis and so many other ancients, had a voice or a thought. Remember, thought is sound. So what is physicality? We have to re-question it because, again, there was never no quote unquote physicality to begin with. All there was was fi or pi, the great womb or darkness. So when you say physicality, the root word is fi or pi. 
if there was only darkness, your idea of physicality is an illusion and the concept must be expanded upon. And that's what we're doing now. In a dream, you recreate this cosmos. And in a dream, everything is physical to you in that dream. If darkness was the only thing existed in the beginning and everything we see come from the darkness and come in and out of the darkness, then one of the mistakes we're making when we try to ask questions about our reality is perceiving the darkness behind the stars as nothingness. So the Bible referred to this darkness as the waters. And we read on and it says, God said, let there be light. And there was light and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, this division has nothing to do with the sun or the moon and those lights. This is the creator's own inner light. This is when the light bulb came on inside of the mind of the creator to even Think of a sun or moon. So this division that the Bible is speaking of here is the division of consciousness being birthed from subconscious. Now, don't let any of that confuse you because you got to keep in mind that the sun has not been created yet. So this light that we're talking about now has to be another light source. It makes more sense that it might be Polaris, that point of singularity that both the sun and moon revolve around. So let's start syncing this with our ripple effect for a minute because one thing I want to point out is in verse five when it says, the evening and the morning were the first day. So this light that we're talking about refers to the dawn, not necessarily daylight outside. But when we talk about dawn, the word can be used to mean the beginning of anything. For example, the dawn of man and etc. Now, when we talk about the first day, this translates to the first rise. And remember, the sun wasn't created yet. So the word day right here translates to the first rise. Now, the word rise is simply an upward movement, a piece of rising ground, or it can be a rising anything a spring, a source, or the beginning. This is very important that the word rise in this scripture mean upward movement. And I'm going to show you why now as we hop over and sync this to our ripple effect. So like I was saying, when we read in Genesis, the first day, the word day translates to rise as in swell. The picture you're looking at now is a ripple effect. We see these all the time in nature. And what we want to pay attention to is the middle of this ripple effect. We have a central pole that shows us where the rock went into the water. That marks the center and everything from that central point spreads out evenly and equally in a 360 degree circle or four corners. When the Bible speaks about the first day being the first rise, I think what we're referring to is the first ripple. And we want to keep this R.I. root in mind when we talk about rise and ripple ritual. A synonym of ripple is crease. And the word crease became Christ. The word crease has the root word C-R-E-A, which is the same root word as create or creation. A crease would be equivalent to an angle or an angel. And what we're looking at with this ripple effect is one of the most simple ways to observe cause and effect and study the law of karma in creation. Some of the things we want to pay attention to is the central point that's marked by two things, an indention as well as a swell. If you look in the middle of the ripple, it's something very magical going on. Not only do you have a mountain or a nipple, you also have a hollow bowl right beneath that. So right above the nipple and the word nipple is related to the word ripple. If you look at a female breast, you can see how it spreads out from the nipple and there are rings. And again, I told you to remember that R-I root ring, ripple, ritual, wrinkle. Okay, the W 
It's silent. We're going to be looking at a lot of more words. So we see that when we drop the rock into the pond, we have as above, so below. We know that the ancients built pyramids and what you see on the surface is just the tip of the iceberg. We know beneath every pyramid is an inverted pyramid right beneath it that's hollow. So pyramids are really diamonds. They are yonis. And this is what we get with the ripple effect. We get a hollow sheol bowl and above that we get a mound or a swell. And remember when we say swell, the last words is L dealing with the God of Saturn, which represents this ripple effect. Yes, there is a luminary or wandering star above your head that they call Saturn. But the picture of Saturn they give you is an ancient concept. Now, the seventh wandering star is Saturn or Satan, and it represents the outer ring or the first bar or barrier or stage. Even the ancestors have a concept of seven heavens. We have seven chakras as well. Seven days a week again, with the last one being Saturday, which is linked to this concept of Saturn. Remember, Saturn is the reaper or the ripple effect. When you look at the ripple effect, another way you can think of this is ringing a bell. When you ring a bell, the sound that the bell makes is a direct result of the ringing. So think about the words we use. We say ring a bell, just like we ring the fingers of a woman, just like the concept of Saturn and the ripple effect with rings around it or echoes. Again, we live in an ecosystem or an ecosystem and all is vibration. All is the ringing of the most high. Now, when we look at the ripple effect, there's more we got to pay attention to. Not only do we have, again, an inverted pyramid below that's hollow and one above it that's a bulge. The root word of bulge is bowl or bale. And remember, when we deal with bale or swell, we're talking about a belly. Think of pregnancy. And remember, we see the word L in all of these dealing with the deity of the cycle of life and death, which is infinity. We see this ripple effect concept in a lot of ancient cosmologies. For example, this Babylonian universe, you can see the inverted pyramid below and the pyramid above it. You can see your 360 surrounding that. You can clearly see above it, it says the zenith, Zan is 10, and this is the North Pole Polaris. There is no South Pole on this Babylonian universe. You can see also when we go back to the pyramids in the middle of this cosmos, you can see that each one has its own ring emanating around it. So it's not just a horizontal concept, it's also a vertical one. So each one of these rings or ripples has a firmament or net that goes with it. Now, if you want more insight on this Babylonian universe and how this whole system works, in detail, check out the recent video that I uploaded by Martin Kenny. It's called Cosmic Egg, and it also features Santos Bonacci. So if you look closely at this Babylonian universe, there are seven steps in the middle of this Babylonian cosmos. And that's because we understand seven is a number that's linked to the Sabbath or Saturn, as well as the number five. And I'll be breaking all of these down. Seven is a number linked to completion. Seven is a cornerstone or an angle. Now, where can we see other examples of this seven step pyramid that we see here in the Babylonian universe? Well, let's look around the world. Here is a step pyramid in South America. And I believe this is one of the step pyramids of Kukulkan. Here we have the step pyramid of Saqqara in Egypt, and here we have a step pyramid in Angkor Wat. Seems to me that the ancients around the world were saying the same thing that the Babylonians were saying, but it don't stop here. What the ripple effect represents is how our reality is a vibration or an echo of as above, so below, starting from above with the voice of the creator making contact with the face of the deep down here below.
And once that vibration kissed the face of those waters, there was a marriage and a child called Gab that was born or the earth that rose from the waters of the deep. And this step pyramid represents the eye, the all seeing eye, big brother, the most high, the voice that spoke this world of light into existence from the darkness. The I in the I am is all represented by a point of singularity that we call Polaris or the North Pole electromagnetism at the center of our earth. And you can see how this has a relationship to the heavens above. Everything is fed from the core outward. This is a two way street. The vibration of the Most High echoing downward in this echoing is a form of the Most High diluting itself. So pure darkness becomes four elements, and those four elements become more echoes of life and so much diversity from one singularity, hence the word universe. So as the vibration echoes downward from one point of singularity, we can see the concept in this step pyramid. And again, when you look at the Babylonian universe, when the vibration, the thought, the voice of the Most High make contact with the canvas of potential, the sea of potential, a light comes on. And again, this isn't the sun. This is when you have a great idea and you get butterflies in your stomach and your eyes get wide. And all you could think about is how to manifest the idea. That's the light bulb we're talking about here. When that happened in the creation process and the creator asked, how can I manifest this idea? The creator answered itself simultaneously while asking the question. And the answer was the four elements, a form of splitting itself or diluting itself. And this can be looked at as the first echoes of the most high or the first vibe of vibration. Remember, VI is five, and the symbol of Saturn became the number five that we use today. Because that fifth element is the darkness that gave birth to the four. So when you look at a five dice, you're looking at an X chromosome symbolizing the womb. You're looking at an hourglass, the number eight for infinity, and so much more that we're going to get into. So we had a ripple effect to come from above down to below. And when the contact was made, there was a second wave of ripples on the face of the deep, which created everything we see. And that first day refers to the first crease or the first ripple. When God saw that it was good, God saw that it was ripe. When fruit is ripe, it's done. And the root word of ripe is rip dealing with this ripple effect this also has a lot to do with our afterlife journey when we rip or r.i.p and meet the ripper or the reaper it's nothing to be scared of i'll be breaking that down in detail so that first wave of ripples on the face of the deep that created our reality was earth wind water and fire and remember after the number four you reach five again, which is also the S for serpent or the sine wave or the spiral or Saturn, Satan. And five is completion, meaning back at the source. So the first wave of ripples was four creases or crinkles, crystals, earth, wind, water and fire, what some call the Elohim. And from these four came everything we see. Already I've synced this ripple effect to many ancient cosmologies around the world. Here's yet another one from Mexico and another one here from Tennessee. You can see how they built this pyramid right by the water so you can have the concept that you have in the Babylonian cosmos. And you can see the same concept here in the Mario game. They're not original guys. Now, something else I want to sink to this is something that all of us see all the time is the all-seeing eye. Everyone loves to talk about the all-seeing eye. Well, why is the capstone detached? So we're going to be comparing the all-seeing eye on our money to this ripple effect. And we're also going to be comparing it to the god of Saturn, El, who gave birth to the Elohim or the elements We're going to be comparing the three of these. 
so in this collage, we're gonna start with the pictures on the top row in the green box. And we're gonna start with the one in the top left corner. Now this is a picture of Turtle Island. And this is just an artistic depiction of our cosmos according to a lot of natives. But what you can see detached from the cosmos is a capstone and it's shaped like a beehive or a step pyramid. Now what I wanna do is hop on over here to the picture in the bottom right corner with the lowercase i. And if you look at the ripple on this picture, you can see that in the middle, we can't forget about our pyramid at the middle. Looks sort of like a Hershey's Kiss. I know that's the first thing many of you thought that's because Hershey's is actually rubbing this in our faces. Notice that in the Hershey's Kisses commercial, it's the middle bell that always rings. So that ringing is the vibration of L or Saturn. And Santa is Satan or Saturn. So the school bell, remember our word bell has the word L in it. The bell shaped just like the god L. And the bell rings, just like the god L has rings. And the bell rings in the middle of the classes. When the ancients thought of reincarnation, they looked at the baby coming out of the womb crying, signalizing a bullhorn. They also celebrated birth with bells. We see these bells in between lifetimes in between classes or periods, and also in between years or seasons. The end of all seasons is marked by the ringing of bells. And the date 25 is because the two fives I was telling y'all about previously, which equals the 10. Now that's what you get when you multiply them. And I went into that earlier, how 10 is a triangle number which is the root word of tent or pyramid. And when you add five plus two, you get seven. And we already know how important seven is. We've been going over that. We know seven is the cornerstone or the angle. And these L's or sevens are the angles that create your stairway to heaven and separate the levels on your step pyramid. They are also the ripples or ripples that emanate from the center of your ripple effect. These are the vibrations or echoes of the Most High that create our ecosystem or ecosystem. So the four L's or elements are what split the base of our cosmic pyramid evenly and also are the angles that creates the stairway to heaven. Each ripple or rip of L or slice of L, remember what predates L is simply the yoni, which is the pi. So the symbol of pi looks just like L or Saturn, another way for Saturn. You also know that pi is also the capital I because the eyes are synonymous to Mount Maru, the all-seeing eye the lowercase i and also the capital I, meaning the mirror cosmos as above, so below. So when you draw out a, a capital I, it takes four L's to do so. So we see this same concept. Four L's even in the Kananga.
Swastika. This is Mount Maru. So each ripple or echo of air comes from the center, experiences birth, life, and death before it vanishes and become back one with the primordial ocean. So as I said previously, every ripple that emanate from the center assume each point on the scale, small, medium, and large, dealing with the Trinitarian nature of our reality. Small and large being the two polarities and medium being the pole. And as the ripple reaches its largest point, it fades away and become back one with the source. As it emanates from the center, it's in its most unstable phase. And you can see this by it not being as pronounced. As it comes from the center, it's still growing to become this perfect ring. And in that mid phase, it's a beautiful ring. And toward the end, it's light, it fades away. We see this in our reality. You got your mound or your mesa, and above it, you got your detached capstone hovering. Now, remember when we say the word drip, that the word rip is also in the word drip. The word drip is trip because all of us is an individual experience of the Most High. All of us is on a trip right now on our own journey in the cosmos as individuals from that one single source or that one primordial vibration that started it all. That's the I, the I am. That's the alpha and omega. We call it the all seeing I. And that refers to the all seeing I of the most high as well as the all seeing I, meaning you. It's the E-Y-E and the capital I. The book of Eli is really the book of I. This is the book of life, what I'm giving you or the Holy Grail. When you say Eli, it's L-I, the I. The all-seeing I is the detached capstone that hovers above the cosmos and sees all from the artist's view. That's the point of singularity. So when you flip your dollar around and see the same concept for the great seal, it's the great ceiling. Remember that the point in the center is where you lick it at, and that's where you put your DNA. This is what seals together our cosmos, where the all-seeing eye would be. When you think of a five dice, that would be the fifth element or the fifth peak, Mount Maru.
let's pay attention to this eye, this all-seeing eye in the bottom right corner when we think about our ripple effect. The lowercase i tells us a story. The driplet at the very top is the one that hovers above the cosmos. And the word hover, if you take away the H, is over, meaning the one that's over the cosmos. And the one that's over the cosmos or bent over the cosmos would be nut. Her two hands and two feet touching the ground what would be those four 90 degree angles that make our rings or our four corners, which is also the four elements. That eye is the most high, or you can look at the phrase the most high as the moist eye. We're talking of primordial waters and the I am. Your eye is moist. When we're dealing with sight, remember that the root word of sight is S-I which is the equivalent of phi. And we'll be getting deeper into that as we move on. When we're dealing with seeing or see, we're dealing with water. And this is what your eyes is made of. So the most high, the moist eye, we receive profound revelations through studying the creation around us. We get revelations within us, just like studying a simple ripple effect can give us so much insight. So remember that bells ring and the vibration is what causes the sound. And you can see the rings around the center of this ripple effect. We're in a Trinitarian reality. And the three scales of measurement are small, medium, and large. And we can see all three of them taking place in a ripple effect, meaning each ripple starts off as a small ripple becomes a medium ripple, a large ripple, then it fades away. This is a human lifetime and also the phases of the moon. This is childbirth, adulthood, and seniority. And remember that the root word of senior is sin. This is when we begin to phase out and take our journey to become back one with the source. Remember that the word over is the word hover or hover and Hova, dealing with God, one of the names of God. Remember that the mothership hovers above the person it's trying to rescue and beams them up. You're looking at the concept of the mothership with this ripple effect. The great womb, the disco ball. And when you say disco ball, you're saying disc o ball. And if you look at this ripple effect, you have a disc o, a disc of o's, and you have your ball or your all seeing eye above it. We have a point of singularity casting a tent downward, casting four corners downward. And this is where we get all the talk about the pyramids were created from the top down. The ancient pyramids were not created from the top down. The ancients were great architects and they had a map that we're yet to figure out if you ask me. But I do think the earth was created from the top down just like I've been explaining Think of a ripple effect. So when we think of this all-seeing eye, we can think of it literally as well when we deal with the alphabets and symbols. So a lowercase i, which symbolizes the individual. Remember when you say E-Y-E, -E, when you flip it around, it's still I, because you and me, all life on earth make up the universe, which is the U and I verse. So when you flip around the word we, you get U, E W, E U, U or U. And if you take the Y off your, you get our. So when you look at a capital I, you're looking at as above, so below. And when you look at this ripple effect in the bottom right corner, you can see the lowercase I. You can see that that lowercase I 
is in a place where it's all seeing. So it's literally the all seeing eye. And this is where we get the symbol for the lowercase I. But not only that, when you flip this lowercase I upside down, it becomes an exclamation point because this is the voice. This is the voice that screamed upon the face of those dark waters and created this ripple effect that we call life. This inhale and exhale, this duat that's creating the present, this past and future that's constantly weaving together the now. So think about this all seeing eye concept, the ball above it is Polaris or the disco ball or the steeple. Remember that there are step pyramids around the world that represent this. And when you say step, the word is steep because steps are steep. So the word step and steep is linked to seven or septos or steptos. Sept is stepped. You're just rearranging the words. So when we take a step, there's a spin on a great wheel represented by the number seven. As you can see in the pyramid, Right above the god L's head, your number seven ball would be in the angle or the corner because the number seven is an angle or a cornerstone, a band, and the word end is in the word band. It represents a turn on the base of the pyramid. One of those sevens on the swastika, remember four sevens is 28, giving you 10, which represent this tent. And number five being a unit directly in the middle that represents that all C and I, as you can see in your pyramid above the god L. Remember that the number five is the hive because this shapes like a beehive. Five is hive. Remember that the number five is also the serpent. It shapes like the S or the serpent because it's in the center. It's the sine wave. It's phi or pi. as well as the symbol of Saturn, the hook of the reaper, and of course the number five. When you flip this lowercase i upside down, you get an exclamation point because this represents sound or sine wave, the vibration of the cosmos. Or the voice, the bell that rung and caused the rings or the vibrations or the echoes that created this great ecosystem. Remember that when we deal with this symbolism, it's always one eye open. A lot of people call it the all seeing eye of the Illuminati. But it's simply Polaris or the pineal gland as well because there's microcosm, macrocosm of this. This is what allows you to recreate this same cosmos in your dreams because this is the piece of you that's connected directly to the source. You're a driplet from the ocean and you're your own ripple effect. So the concepts I'm giving you in this video is just an introduction to get you ready for more deeper aspects that we're gonna go into in future videos. So again, this lowercase i, you can see that the dot hovering above it is that one all C and I that's always open, that CBS is showing you. And if you look to the left of this ripple effect at the god L, you can see he's representing the same thing by simply turning his head and only exposing one eye. There's a reason that the god L in this picture only has one eye showing because he's representing that one drip that's hovering above the cosmos.
and you can see at the base of L, you have your ripples. You have all of your rings surrounding L, and it appears to be seven. That's our lucky number. Let's go ahead and look to the left of L, and of course the all-seeing eye that we're so familiar with. You see it has the detached capstone, and it has the one eye with the rays emitting from around it in a 360-degree fashion showing you how this ripple effect work. But one thing I want you to pay attention to, at the base of this pyramid is VI. And remember, VI or IV is all linked to five. So VI is five. And we're gonna be dealing with this etymology on a real deep level. So this pyramid that we see on the back of our dollars is the same concept we see with the step pyramids all over the world done by the ancients with the capstone detached. That represents the all-seeing eye that's always hidden. Even your pineal gland is the hidden eye that's in the center of your skull. And it's said that the pineal gland is the first organ to form and all of the others form around it. So this is the same ripple effect we see happening all over when we study nature. We have a point of singularity casting out a foundation of four corners, which is 360 degrees. And that would be equivalent of your pineal gland and your dome forming in the womb of your mother. <laughs> casting out your 360 extensions or corners being your elbows and ink L's. two arms and two legs, those four points emanating from a central pole. So to the left of the all sin eye, you have Buddha Zen. We know this is a familiar meditating position, but what I want to point out is how the legs are what's called Indian style, coiled up. We see a lot of the Naginis in the ancient world this way. This is for a reason dealing with that spring energy, that kundalini energy. Remember your seven chakras would be those ripples or those seven steps on our step pyramid. Your four corners because your four corners govern the chakras. What you do with the extensions of your body determine the vibration of your chakras and vice versa. So there's a relationship with the seven and the four. And whenever you add them, you get L even. Because when you take four sevens and you make them even, you create a base of a pyramid or a swastika. If you look at the god L's arms, his arms making two L's and they are even. And when you take two L's and bring them together, or two sevens and bring them together, you get 14, which will give you the number five. And remember, the number five is the all-seeing eye. So these four corners at the base of your pyramid are the foundations that support the fountain, which is the peak or the zenith. And in mathematics, four of these sevens will give you 28, which will give you 10, your pyramid number. And remember when we deal with the ripple effect, you have two of these pyramids, one inverted beneath the one on top. So when we say 10, and you divide it by two, you get five because each one of these represent five. Five is hive. Five is the pyramid from a top view. And 
when you're looking at the pyramid from a top view, there's one beneath that. So there's another five on the other end giving you 10. So when you're looking at the double trident or what's called the Kanaga, it appears to be six points, but that's because the fifth point is hidden, but it's really 10 points. representing this diamond cosmos that we live in. Everything is an echo or a vibration or reflection. Diamond is 10. Number two is related to the seven because two times five will give you 10 or two times seven will give you 14, which is five. All of these numbers are related. Two represents the duality. And I'll do a whole nother video just on the numbers. To the left of our triangle there in the middle is the Masonic cosmos. This is what they teach all of their initiates about the cosmos while they're giving you the solar system. Now, when you think of the early solar system, it is a form of the ripple effect. But it's a way to throw you off and give you a ball earth to hide the truth while they practice the truth in secrecy. So when we talk Mount Maru, it is a subconscious place and a conscious place, a quote unquote spiritual place and physical place. You can get there from the inside or the outside. It exists at the North Pole on Earth where all compasses are pointing, but it also exists within the human. You can get there in dreams, and you can get there in between lifetimes. Also within a lifetime, meaning let's get boats and go, which is something I'm interested in. So when you look at this Masonic cosmos, of course you got your all-seeing eye, at the top with the rays of light emitting from it, 360 degrees around it, symbolizing your ripple effect. Sun and moon going around it because this is the North Pole that the sun and moon circled around, of course. You got your four corners. And something we want to pay attention to in this Masonic cosmos is your steps in the middle. Remember in the middle of our Babylonian cosmos was our step pyramid. And there were seven steps. This is what the Masons are showing you. Now, in this picture, there are seven steps with the seventh step being the ground step, which is your checkerboard or the playing field that we are on. Now, if you look at the totem pole in the top right corner, the base of that pole, there's a pentagram next to it because these five points that we see in the pentagram are important for the same reasons I'm pointing out to you the significance of number five, and we'll get more in detail on that later. Now above this step pyramid is a book with the Masonic square and compass on it, and that's the book of life, as above, so below. What it represents is our diamond cosmos, our mirrored cosmos. The pyramid at the center of our cosmos and the hollow pyramid that's beneath it, that's inverted. That's what this square and compass or macabre six-pointed star represents. Notice that you have four points around it representing those four corners. And in the middle, you have a diamond or a womb. That's the all-seeing eye, the great womb, the divine feminine, the five.
the significance of the number five. And when you say significance, you're saying side dealing with five. The significance of the number five and why it's linked to Sirius because Psi is dealing with five and Osiris is just another form of Saturn. So the significance of the number five is that five is the rhythm. Rhythm is ringing. Rhythm is vibration. The H is really an I. When you say rhythm, instead of R-H-Y, it should be R-I. Remember our R-I root that we get in ring, rise, and in rhythm, which is ringing or vibration. The easiest number to learn when you're learning multiplication is the five. When I was in math class, it was easy for me to do my timetables with the number five because there's rhythm to it. Five is divisible by itself and any number ending in zero. In other words, it's zero all over again. As I said, there are no numbers out the four. You just reach the fifth peak. When you make it through the four bends or the four corners, you reach the fifth peak. And six is a spiral represent you doing it all over again. After that is seven completion. Eight, remember, is infinity. Nine is a spiral. Ten is just the binary code all over again. So everything out the four is repetitive. And when you say repeat, you're saying ripple, repair, repel, rebel, repeat rewind or rewind inhale exhale so the number five is symbiotic of the creator and again when you say symbiotic you're dealing with that psi root again it's symbiotic of the most high symbiotic for all of the reasons i've been describing to you and again it's the most rhythmic number in the numeric system and you can hear the rhythm in it 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Five has a rhythm to it. Anytime you times a number with five, you get a number ending in zero or either five because they're one and the same. So five is one of those mirror numbers, reflective numbers, just like zero. Anytime you add a number with zero, you get that number. That's because five represent these primordial waters that respond to your vibration of thought. So your words and thoughts are sound vibrations that are so light every time you think and talk and all of your actions is recorded within the ether. Every action, every thought, every sound ascends to the most high for that all seeing eye. Because all of these thoughts originate in the darkness of your mind and that darkness of your mind is directly linked to the darkness behind the stars. Everything is being recorded. So we can see the same parallels in the Masonic cosmos here. And remember the mirror reflective abilities of the number zero slash five and how it relates to the ripple effect in our vibrational cosmos. So something else I want to point out with this Masonic cosmos is right below that checkered board is a casket on the ground, and we're going to be doing future videos on the afterlife and the reaper because the word reaper is linked to the word ripple. It's the word riper. The reaper comes when you're ripe. Remember, when you become a senior, you start to wrinkle or ripple. And then the reaper comes for you. So the casket we see in this Masonic cosmos is symbolic of the reaper or Saturn. Earth is Saturn. It's surrounded by rings or vibrations or ecosystems, other worlds. and also worlds within worlds and merging worlds. Before we go to that multiverse concept, we really gotta crawl before we walk because what I'm giving you now is just an intro. So before we move on from this collage, let's pay attention to the symbol of Saturn which shapes like the hook of the reaper, the number two, the number five, and you see your crossroads and that cross represents the diamond effect as above, so below, as well as the yoni that you come from. Remember that the word crisis, crease, dealing with wrinkles 
for ripples, creases, is crinkles, crystals. And remember that the casket, the shape of the casket is nothing but the cross, the shape of the uterus. So the tomb is the womb. And that will be a future video that I will be doing, breaking that concept down to you. The Earth cosmos is also a great womb, of course. So when we look at this symbol of Saturn, it's the number five that we use today, as well as the reaper's hook symbolizing all of the concepts we've been going over so far. So to the top right of this collage, again, it's the lowercase i, which represents the most high or I am, that original wave that spoke it all into existence. And when you flip that upside down and mirror it, you get the exclamation point because that represents the bull horn or bell horn. Now this bull horn is what they're giving you for the black hole concept. And also what they're giving you for the Big Bang concept. So remember when we say start, that the root word of start is star. And the first star was Polaris, the pole that gave birth to the polarity. The voice was the vote. When we talk voltage, we talk power. When we lift our voice and give our voice when we're electing a president, we're giving sound vibration, giving our power and our signature, which is vibration, a sigil. Remember our root word, psi. So when you vote, you're giving your vote, your voltage, your power to a presiding, someone to preside over you. The two words VO that we see in vocal, voice, voltage, vote, and etc. So to speak is to spark. And that spark is what cut the light on in Genesis. And that light is the line, the vertical line being the cosmic womb. and the horizontal line being the divine masculine or the Horus energy. So, of course, what we're looking at now is just a top view of the North Pole on Mount Maru. You can see in the middle there, there's a black stone. The name of that black stone is Rupis Nigra, and it translates to the black stone or either the black reaper. The word Rupes is also reaper. The black stone or Rupis Nigra is Mount Maru. We also see that when we say Lemurian, the word Maru is in Lemurian, and that this ripple effect concept is similar to Plato's Atlantis. We also see that the word Niagara sounds like Niagara, also dealing with a fall. The North Pole is also said to be a fountain by the ancients. We say things like reap what you sow. So when you think about casting a rock into a pond, you reap that which you sowed or you ripple that which you sowed. And the ripples is always more ripples than that which you threw into the pond. So the Bible say you get back that which you sowed, I believe something like sevenfold and that lucky number seven again. So when you throw one rock, you get a bunch of ripples, just like when you plant one seed, you get hundreds and thousands of seeds and they just multiply 
So you can see them telling us this same thing when you go to most malls today. They have a little fountain or a well full of water and they tell you to drop a cent or a coin into the water and make a wish. And that's a ritual that's as above so below. Your coin is making a ripple and they're telling you to make a wish by dropping your scent or your sin, your consent, your sign, your vibration into the water and putting your will into it. Remember when we say will, we talking about something that spins in a 360 degree, something that's a 360 so we're going to be talking more about Rupees Nigra and how it relates to the Trinity. Because remember, the word ripple is also in the word triple. So this video is just an intro. Like I said, we're going to crawl before we walk. Now, the reason I put up this picture of the North Pole is so that we can see this black stone. This is the stone that the builders rejected. This is the detached scap stone that we see in Kemet. And it's always black dealing with Rupus Nigra or the Black Reaper. Now, when we look at this North Pole map that so many of us are familiar with, yes, we're looking at a geographic map that shows us continents around the pole, but let's flip on over and let's compare this to our Dogon womb of all world signs. And you can see that this is also a top view of the North Pole, but from a creation standpoint. So instead of four continents, what the Dogon have here around the North Pole is earth, wind, water, and fire because all of these things parallel each other. Remember, we see that word L again in parallel. We see the concept of Pi here in our Dogon womb of all world signs. They're showing us what I was telling you about, how the darkness split itself via echo vibration and duplicated itself in the form of the creation, those first four building blocks being the four elements emanating from that fifth element, which is the primordial source or that primordial sea we call simply darkness where all things come from. We can't forget that. That's not nothingness. That's not emptiness. They gave us a concept of space and emptiness. But when the ancestors looked up at that darkness, they didn't have a concept of space and emptiness. They called it room. And there's a difference between emptiness and room. Remember that O-M root of om and tomb, womb, room, not space. So this darkness is a portal. We're going to be getting deeper into that. But as we look at this Dogon womb of all world sign, we can see all of the four elements emanating from the North Pole. And that North Pole was called Ama by the Dogon. And that's a mother goddess that's also represented in the form of the Kananga. And she represents those four points, just like Nut represent those four points with her two hands and two feet touching the ground. In the middle would be the umbilical cord connecting the earth. And that umbilical cord is the North Pole. Remember the O-R root of organism, cord, north, portal. Ama became Saturn in a lot of other cosmologies. But we see the same concept here in the Mayan cosmos where they have the great mother in the middle. The mother has her tongue out. Because the mother represents the great seal or the great sealing. And where her tongue is is where the North Pole would be or where you would seal the back of an envelope. And an envelope is made the same way. Remember, the word envelope means to encompass something. What is it encompassing? The male, which is the spark or gab, which is the masculine, the male. And that is represented by Gab again, or that baby that travels in and out of existence via this port called the woman. So the Dogon represented that by Ama. The Mayans represented it by their mother goddess here. Again, these four corners and a point in the middle is all cosmology. You can see the same concept here with the mother goddess Kali and Hindu. And when we look at all of these, we're looking at our ripple effect from a top view. You would see that dot or that driplet as a point and emitting from that would be the echoes migrating outward from that center point equally in a 360 degree fashion or four corners. So we see this same concept in 
things like Pangea that they tell us about. When we ask the questions how the human races were created, well, let's look at the word. What are races? What we're calling races are simply different types of humans. And what mainstream science is telling us about ourselves is to detach us from our divinity. You see, there are no races. There was one equal race. And the one who blowed the whistle at the beginning to get all of this diversity and life running was the most high. All of these games start with the blowing of a whistle. Now, there are no races. There was one race. We say things like all life was created equal. Well, do we really mean it? The concept that I'm giving you, it doesn't contradict the statement when we think about cosmological origins and etc. Because if the ripple effect is true, then all life was indeed created equally at the same place at the same time. And the race outward from the center was just that life being fruitful and spreading itself just like the creator wanted it to. But along the way, something happened. We forgot who we were. Seems like the further we moved from the center, the less of this subconscious knowledge we had and the more conscious knowledge we gained. So in our world today, we need all type of tools and tarot cards and crystals and stuff to connect with that center because that center is also within us. But maybe the signal is weakened the further we move away from it the more we need tools and things of that nature to connect with it. And the further we move toward the center, the less conscious knowledge we have or the less tool making and electronic device making knowledge we have and the more subconscious spiritual knowledge we have. The more we move toward the center, the less secret societies we see because everyone knows the secret in Eden. So the ripple effect is a very simple concept, but it's a micro macro concept. It don't just happen when you place a stone in water. It happens when you place a seed in the ground. It happens when a man ejaculates into a woman. It happens when the light bulb of an idea, which is a seed, comes on in the darkness of a mind. That spark, that idea impregnates the darkness of mind and the birth is new inventions, things we pull out of the darkness into the light. So the ripple is the reaper and is not a bad deity or something to be frightened about. They want you to be that way to keep you away from the source. So it's a very simple concept, like I said, with a point of singularity. And at that point of singularity, you have a mound and an indention as well as an all C and I. And this tent is pitched from the top down, casting four corners or 360 around it. And where else can we see this same concept? Well, here is the Milky Way galaxy. And it's another form of the ripple effect. But as you can see, it's a blasphemous form that takes away the great mother or the covering, which is the covenant and leaves us open to all kind of spookism and fear mongering, such as meteors going to hit you and the creator don't got it under control. Now, the word galaxy is gal axi. There's only one axi or axis, and that's the North Pole. And it is a womb or a girl. So when you look at a Masonic square and compass, you can see that G or that spiral, that womb, that girl. And it's not gravity. You know, they teach us about gravity by showing you like a trampoline with a bowling ball at the center causing an indention. And because of that indention, things are able to propel upward once the absorption reaches its climax. This is the ripple effect. This is the spring energy. This has nothing to do with gravity and the trampoline nonsense, but you can see the concept of the trampoline that they're trying to give you for gravity. You can see this concept with the ripple effect. When you drop the rock into the water, the water acts as the trampoline, creating a similar effect that they try to give you with gravity. Now, with this Milky Way galaxy, the reason they call it the Milky Way is because milk is dealing with fertility a life-sustaining liquid just like the waters above that primordial sea. And in a lot of cosmologies, you can see Nut. We understand that Nut is where they stole this Milky Way concept from, this spiral of life, because the ceiling above us spins 
in the carousel motion. Nut, she's the spiral, the gal atsy. And the reason they call it the Milky Way, because in a lot of the ancient cosmological arts, you can see that Nut's breast is hanging down over the earth, symbolizing the manna or the rain from heaven that sustains the life on earth. And that rain can also be looked at as royalty, that rain from heaven, because she's the one that reigns from heaven so that her children can reign below. And as a symbiotic relationship, just like a child hooked to the umbilical cord of a mother. So when you look at this Milky Way, you're looking at 6-9. You're looking at the six-pointed star as above, so below. You're looking at childbirth. Now, what else can we compare our ripple effect to? Well, this is what they give us for the Big Bang right here. And I don't have to say much. A picture is worth a thousand words. You can see emanating from the center is a spark. And that spark has a vertical pole. That would be your driplet or your all-seeing eye above that hovers above the center. And the bottom half of that pole coming from that center light would be your indention below. So it would be your as above, so below once again. And from that comes your ripple effect or the child that's being born called Gab. That's the ripple or the rebel, the one that detaches from the mother when you cut the umbilical cord, that's a form of rebelling. So the child is a ripple or an echo. And that's Gab. In the case of our cosmos, it would be Earth itself. All of us, all the life you see around you on this horizon. It's the child of a vertical duat creating a horizontal trinity. This vertical duat, again, is the voice of the Most High speaking down upon the waters of the great deep. And when the sound vibration of the Most High made contact with those waters, which was instantly the kissing of the two, gave birth to a ripple effect, a.k.a. a series of echoes or an ecosystem, ecosystem that we call Earth. And it's a beautiful world, I must say. So where else can we see our ripple effect? Of course, in Genesis when we see that the darkness itself is a sea of potential, the subconscious nature of the Most High, and the light would be the conscious nature, and the conscious nature of the Most High was born out of the subconscious, and that consciousness was the four corners of what we call life, earth. It's the conscious creation of the Most High, and within that consciousness are conscious creatures that has subconsciousness within them. So we are made in the image of the Most High, which is that darkness, because we come from it, go back to it, and we go back to it every night when we sleep. And when we sleep, we create this same earth. We create a sun and moon, clouds, wind, insects, all of that behind the darkness of our eyelids when we sleep. Therefore, we are made in the image of the Most High. We can create this same cosmos in our mind, which is awesome. And every time we do it, it's let there be light. Every time you have a new invention, a new idea, let there be light within the darkness of your mind. So somewhere else where we can see our ripple effect parallel is the old solar system model here that they gave us when we were young. And I don't have to go over this one too much. We already can see how this is indeed another form of the ripple effect. But what I want to point out real briefly is that what this model does is remove the earth from the center of it all. Balls up the earth as a little blue speck and has the sun in the place of El or Ama. So where earlier we saw the Dogon Mama Ama at the center and then all of the matriarchal pre-dynastic cosmologies for the most part you have the mother goddess or the great womb at the center and here of course you have a solar system meaning a sun-centered system now i get into the history of heliocentrism and sun worship as it deals with the cosmology i have a whole video that'll teach you how newton gab became a solar system after you watch this video, I really recommend that you guys check out the video description area because I went through the trouble of making a list of links for you down there. 
so that you could continue this research afterwards. Because I have been teaching in detail the same very stuff that's on this video, but a lot of people been missing out on it because they don't catch the live stream alerts. And a lot of those videos are just tremendously long, eight hours and over eight hours. But I really urge you to take the time and watch them, guys. It's truly something that's worth it, and you will be glad you did. Now, let's move on. So as we read on in the book of Genesis, starting at verse five, and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. I just went over that with you about the first day. Verse six, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. This is a form of Genesis telling you how the creator divided the consciousness from the subconscious or the unknowing from the all knowing or the light from the darkness. Remember that this darkness is a form of water. It's a primordial sea of potential. We went over that. But something else interesting is when we say let it divide the waters from the waters. Keep your ripple effect in mind. Because if you look at your ripple effect, the waters are divided from the waters in all ways, meaning the all seeing eye, the driplets that's hovering above the center point. These are individual driplets of water that was separated from this primordial sea or this ocean. So vertically, we can sync this scripture to what we see in nature and also compare this to the creation of our cosmos. If all is vibration, like Tesla said. So again, the waters being separated from the waters refers to the vertical drips above the point of impact. And in this case, we have a rock being thrown into the water. But how mainstream science used this same concept with us is by throwing a comet to the earth or throwing a meteor onto the earth somewhere in their evolutionary mythology to say that life was seated this way. So they have to give you this concept of something striking something, but they want to make it violent and make the creator chaotic and hide these concepts that I'm giving you. It don't have to be that way. It can be beautiful just the way I'm showing you now, as opposed to a cosmic collision and things being seated through fireballs this is just more forms of sun worship to hide the beauty of this place and the divinity of the great womb. What is another way we can see the waters being separated from the waters in this ripple effect? Well, we pointed out the vertical way. The horizontal way would be the ripples themselves. So if you look at the ripples, they are separated by waters, different kinds of water. What's making these ripples is water that's rising and water that's sinking. You have an inhale and exhale, a duat, and this is how you create a ripple. You have a part that's sticking up and a part that's going under. So you have water behaving the same way as a sine wave or a serpent, and this gives you ripples or wrinkles, creases. Remember that the root word of Crease, C-R-E-A, is the same as creator, create, creation, Christos, which became Christ. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. So I just went over that, how the waters above the firmament was separated from the waters below. I just went over that vertical division with our all-seeing eye driplet hovering above the point of impact. So let's move on. And God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day or the second ripple. After every day or ripple, there's a reestablishing of this firmament. And that goes into a lot of what Martin Kenny was going into on his previous videos on how the different worlds or the different lands around us, the different rings of lands around us all have their own firmament. And our wandering stars could be the sun and moon for those other lands. So the land beyond our ring, their sun and moon could be Mars and Venus and so forth and so on each divided by their own Taurus field. 
So check out Martin Kenny's video. You can do so by checking the video description area. I have everything you need in that video description area, people, for your convenience. And God called the firmament heaven in the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Now we got to compare that to our ripple effect. Because God said, let the waters under the heaven, meaning under these driplets, under these dots, under the all seeing eye or the moist eye, the most high. Let those waters be gathered together unto one place. Now we can see right below that all seeing eye, all of these waters start to gather and create a funnel type shape or a little mountain. That's called a pile. Now, remember that the root word of pile is pie. A pile is a pyramid or a pyramid. It's a pile. So one thing nature shows us is that if you were to pour anything on the ground, for example, sugar or flour or sand, nature will automatically make it into a pile. This is natural. Nature is very organized, is very intelligent. Anything you pour onto the ground forms a pile automatically. Now, remember that the first two words of automatic is AU dealing with the golden age, dealing with gold, the subconscious. The root word of pile is pi, and you can see the waters piling up at the very center of this ripple effect because that's where the tension is. That's where the pole of a tent would be. This is where all of the energy in your pyramid would build up at, at that central core. So what the Bible saying is spot on. Below the waters above, you have a gathering of the waters or a pile right there at the middle of this ripple effect. And it shapes like a pie slice because remember, the root word of pile is pie. And that pie slice is the divine feminine, the vagina, because when we go into those waters, but well, when we're placed into the tomb, we're placed into the womb. The Christian's telling you the same thing with baptism. Your casket is laid horizontal with the earth, parallel to the earth. El is the God of Saturn. When your casket is laid parallel to the earth and you're placed into the tomb, you're placed into the womb at the same time. So you come back up and you stand up vertically after you come out of those waters of your next mother. So when the Christian goes into the waters of baptism, he falls backward horizontally. And it's what happens when we put into the casket. We fall backwards and lay horizontal with the earth. We close our eyes just like we do when we're getting baptized. And while we see in darkness, we're also wet. So when you close your eyes behind your eyelids, you see darkness and it's wet behind there. And at the same time, you're in darkness in the wetness of your next mother womb. This darkness is a portal to transit the soul in and out of existence. So when you're placed into the tomb, you're placed into the womb. And when you rise again, remember that R.I. root, that's the spark. You're the star that's starting. And you're rising up out of those waters of baptism of your mother. And you're opening your eyes just like a Christian does when they come up from the waters of baptism. So it's not the blood of Christ that was sacrificial to you being here. It was the blood of your mother's womb that you were covered in. That was sacrificial blood that led to you being here. So to continue decoding the Bible here, we can see verse nine clearly with our ripple effect. Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place again. That's that mound or that mountain. When you think of a major league baseball field, the pitcher is in the middle on the mound. And that pitcher's position is the same position where the waters is gathered in this ripple effect, where you see this pyramid or this pile. That's the pitcher's mound. Now, remember that the first two words of pitcher is pie. The pitcher is the pie. Remember, he's the one that's pitching or throwing the ball and the pitcher being the one throwing the ball from the pile or the mound. When you look at this ripple effect, it looked like the picture or the pile is throwing the ball up above its head. 
this looks very similar to Atlas and a lot of more deities that's raising the ball above their head in a lot of these images as well. That ball represents the voice of the Most High that made something happen called a ripple effect. So this pile also shapes like a funnel. And you notice that the word funeral is similar to the word funnel because the ancestors said when we're placed into the ground, we're placed into the mound or the womb of our next mother. Again, the tomb is the womb. Check out the video description. I go into that deep in previous videos and I'll be getting into it more in the future. Let's keep it moving here. So the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear and it was so. So we see that all of the waters at the center of this ripple effect forms a pile or a pyramid like I just went over. And because of that, all of the waters around it are sunken in. So surrounding our mound in the middle is a dent. There's a ring surrounding that pile. That's a dent. And it's there because all of the waters have been gathered to the center. So that pile represents the pie or the yoni, the feminine. And we see because of it, there's a ring that forms around it. And because of this, we place the ring on the finger of the woman. Because of the womb's life-giving abilities, because of how this pile in the middle constantly pumps out ripples from its center, this womb at the center is what burps out all of these ripples or rings, and so we put the ring on her finger. So because the waters around the pile was pulled into the center, it left a dent around that pile, and the combination of the pile in the center and a dent around it creates an eyeball. And that eyeball is the first ripple that gives birth to every ring that's emitted from the center after that. So what we read at this point in the Bible, because of the piling up in the center, the dry land appeared. Because when everything was piled or pulled to the center, surrounding it was a ring, was a sunken ring. And within that, action the ecosystem was created so when the bible said a dry land appeared because of this piling up at the center and the sinking of the land around that pile when the bible speak of the earth or the dry land appearing because of that it's because that was your first original ripple that gave birth to the four elements so now that you have the four elements you have dry land now not only dry land, now you have liquid water now that's being birthed out of this primordial ocean. And you also have fire and wind, of course. So now the creator has two arms and two feet, meaning the four elements. And we're made in the image of these four elements. Earth, wind, water, and fire is what the human is composed of, as well as all of the elements that those four are parents of. So the hands and feet of the Most High was earth, wind, water, and fire. Those are the extensions or the limbs that the Creator used to create everything else with. And they was born out of the pure subconscious of the Most High, represented by the vertical split of those waters, making contact with the face of the deep, causing a piling at the center and a sunken ring around it that exposed the dry land or created the first four ripples or echoes, cornerstones or four corners to our reality. So now we have our first four building blocks. And later you'll read on and see that the actual sun was now created because now the creator has elements to create with or tools and remember, the first tools that humans had were their hands, their feet, their mind, their extensions. When you say extension, you're saying ex, meaning outside of something, and tension or ten, dealing with the pyramid of creation, which consists of a four-corner base, which all creations need to wield themselves into existence. Earth, wind, water, fire. But that fifth point is the hitter when that's the peak. That's the missing capstone because these four elements are being manipulated by the hidden one or the pineal.
the subconscious that's having the idea is what's manipulate these four elements with the four extensions of the human. So last but not least, we'll go ahead and read verse 10 and we'll move on because everything out the verse 10 is just the creation of the grass and all of the animals and all of that. So verse 10, and God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he sees and God saw that it was good. So in verse 10, a way you can sum this up is when you look at your four corners, each element has an opposing element or polarity. And like we say, opposites attract because these give birth to new diverse things. So if you look at these four elements, you will have water and earth, which are polarities, and also wind and fire, which are polarities. So what verse 10 basically is teaching us is density. How all of these four elements separate themselves naturally in our reality. And when it refers to the waters, that also mean the atmosphere and the gases, which is separated so perfectly. We teach all the time how there is no gravity. Everything is separated in this reality according to density. And we go over that in so many videos. Please explore the channel. Verse 10 is telling us how after all of the elements were created, there was order after the creation process. After these four elements was created, they had to be organized in locations that would be suitable. And the Most High did an excellent job. Because of this, ships can float and balloons can float. Because of this separation, bubbles will always rise to the surface of the water to become back one with the air because this is the area of the cosmos that the creator assigned for this particular particle and the same for the other elements and etc. There was divine organization going on after the elements were created and we can sum it all up with one word called density. I also find it interesting that all of this takes place in verse 10. The biggest act of balance in the whole creation process takes place in verse 10. And I keep telling you that 10 is Zen completion. 10 is tent. So the tent is now fully built and order has been established. And now the stage is set for sentient beings that will be birthed from those four Elohim. And what's manipulating these four elements is that fifth element, the most high, because the most high hands and feet are those four elements. So from these four elements and out the order was established, now the stage is set for more sentient life that's gonna be birthed from those creations. So it's an echo effect, a trickling down effect. So out the verse 10, when the order is established or when the tent is established and all of the elements are harnessed and organized from those and from that stage comes the other organisms like you and me. So out the verse 10, that's exactly what the Bible get into. We all know this biblical creation story. I'm just going to pretty much stop it at 10 because that's our binary code, our number of Zen. And I think it'll be good to stop it right there because we all know what happens after this verse. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and say that I really appreciate you all for your viewership, your support. Let me give a shout out to my patrons. Let me give a shout out to all of you, my lovely subscribers. This information I'm bringing to you is very hard to organize and present in a way that it's user friendly and interesting to view. 
so I'm doing the best I can. I don't want to be too redundant. Now, this video was just an introduction. A lot of people who've been tuned in to the channel, they heard a lot of the stuff that I presented here. Now, there was some new things I presented. I will be presenting brand new, fresh ideas going deeper into this rabbit hole as we explore this ripple effect some more. Because if you think this video was something, you ain't saw nothing yet. I got so much more to get into, but I don't want to make the video too long. So I'm going to stop it here. And I want all of you to be on the lookout for part two. And I'm going to keep this thing going. If you like this, go ahead and hit the like button and share it to everyone you know because it's profound information that I know resonates with a lot of your souls because it resonates with mine. If you didn't understand a lot of the things in the video, catch me on the next live stream, get a panel link, come up and hit me with the questions that you wrote down. Other than that, stay tuned because I'm not going to leave no stone unturned and I'm going to move beyond this introduction and we're going to get real deep into the etymology, sacred geometry and symbolism dealing with this ripple effect and the god El as well as the Reaper and Mount Maru, the North Pole, a.k.a. Rupus Nigra or Black Stone, Black Reaper. What they're telling us about the planet Saturn is really about the Earth. If you're a patron of this channel and you haven't received your free crystal gift set that I give my patrons to show my appreciation, then just shoot me an email and remind me of that. And I'll verify everything and send them right on out. It's important to make sure that you stay subscribed to this channel as well as subscribe to my other two channels, Bro Sanchez Live and flat power tv make sure you sub to both of those and make sure you get in the video description area and check out those links now that you've watched this video it's gonna take you some time but it's also gonna take me some time to get part two ready so check these out as you go along with the new uploads and be thorough so that you can tie all of it together because a lot of the deep information associated with this subject i've already went over in previous streams all you got to do is get in the description and be patient enough to watch eight hour long videos i am going to make this stuff shorter but when we on live streams, it just goes about eight hours sometime because you got so many people want to speak. But if you can just go through those things and watch them, you will be rewarded with some profound information that's going to make the hairs on your skin stand up about this ripple effect and a lot of more stuff. Me and Santos Bonacci have done previous live streams going into a lot of these deep aspects. So guys, get in the description area and make sure that you check out the video by Martin Kenny, Cosmic Egg. In fact, I recommend you check that one out first because it's only like two hours, three hours. And that one is very important because he has an interesting model that ties together all of this stuff. So check that one out first and then do your homework on all of the other links on the list. Once again, thank you all for tuning in. This is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just an intro video that's going to lead into her story to his story. And what these videos does is shows us how the cosmos was created. So if we're going to start at the beginning, I chose to start here at the ripple effect on my belief on how our cosmos is not only made, but what it's made of. And that's pure consciousness vibration emanating from the source remember there were no elements in the beginning so how was the elements created pure vibration pure thought remember thought is vibration thought is sound now i'm gonna be taking the concept of thought sound vibration sinking it deeper with this ripple effect how the cosmos was created but we got to crawl before we walk so these introductory videos are very important and these will lead up into how we left Eden. But first, we got to start with how it was all created. That's why I'm doing the ripple effect introductions. So I'm going to let you guys go ahead and get out of here now. Don't forget to follow me on other social media such as Facebook and Twitter. Last Thursday, I didn't have an upload because I was running behind. But 
If you've been following me, you know I do a good job of being consistent with new uploads every Thursday. So stay tuned. Peace and much love.